Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. In Season 4, we learned a few basic definitions for some real virtues. In this season, we'll be trying to pin down the real meanings of some things that people treat like virtues, which aren't always virtuous. In other words, fake virtues. Today's fake virtue is... Humility. Say what? Isn't humility a real virtue? Well, yes, for the most part it is. It's certainly more of a virtue than most of these others. However, some of the fake virtues we've been studying were only virtuous under certain conditions, and others were only virtuous according to certain definitions of the word. Humility is only virtuous when it's properly understood. Now everybody knows that humility is the opposite of pride, and everybody who's put any work into studying virtue and vice knows that pride is bad. Therefore, when we use the word pride to refer to a certain kind of attitude or behavior, what we're really saying is that it's the opposite of humble. In other words, if we can nail down the right definition of pride, we can figure out what humility is. This is going to take a lot of work, because the word pride is used very often in the modern world, and in quite a number of different ways. Still, that's what Clean Cut is all about, cutting through the debris to get at the truth. So, let's start looking at these different definitions of pride, and see if we can't arrive at a few conclusions about them. However, be warned, once again, this is going to be a long one. There are a lot of false understandings of the word pride. Definition 1. Satisfaction or happiness. Here's where many people feel they can cut humility right off at the knees. For example, when we say the accountant took pride in the work he'd done, we're not talking about him being haughty and arrogant about his work. We're talking about him being satisfied and happy with the work he did. This definition is problematic for two reasons. First, because if pride is happiness, then humility is sadness, and the divine command to be humble is the same as a command to be sad, which is absurd. Some people have abandoned the faith because they were convinced that priests and deacons were telling them to be sad every other Sunday. Then there are all the warnings against pride in the scriptures, saying that it's a horrible evil, the source of all of their sins, etc. However, if pride were happiness, then happiness would be the source of all sin. But we know that God is the source and true nature of happiness. Therefore, God would be the source of sin, which is just as absurd. Given what we already know about God and his relationship with man, it's perfectly clear that this definition of pride is a false one, a recent invention which people have produced to confuse one another. This is not the real meaning of pride, nor is sadness the real meaning of humility. Definition 2. Personal dignity or self-respect. A well-understood meaning of pride is thinking too highly of oneself. However, many people have lost the ability to discern how highly is too highly. Because of this, quite a few people call it pride whenever anyone recognizes any value in themselves or their actions at all. This is like saying that there's no real difference between enjoying the shade under a huge tree and bowing down to worship it. The two actions don't even compare to each other, because one is a properly ordered use of something you have, and the other one is definitely not properly ordered. It's not pride and not a sin to recognize that you have value placed into you by God. What is sinful is inflating that value beyond what it actually is. Therefore, this definition of pride is false. Definition 3. Respect for others. In the same way that high respect for one's own dignity can be seen as pride, high respect for the dignity of others can be seen as pride too. I don't really know why this is. It seems utterly irrational and spiteful to even think of calling respect for others pride. But I've been studying the messages of those who hold this view, and here's what I've been able to piece together. Apparently, people all think of one another as equal, and according to many modernists, we're all basically creatures of the same kind, equally tiny in relation to the universe and equally insignificant. On the basis of this incorrect view of our relationship to existence, respecting the value of someone else indirectly seems to respect our own value. That's tough to break down, so I think it would be best to look at it in the form of a mathematical equation. I respect the value of 3, and I am 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 equals 3. Therefore, in respecting someone else, I indirectly respect myself. Weird, isn't it? This kind of thinking seems almost extraterrestrial to someone who takes time to consider it. 
Of course, people are distinct from one another. They're not equal integers, they're human beings. However, even if they were integers, it's not prideful to show proper respect to yourself, so showing it to others is clearly not prideful. Definition 4. Good manners, pedantism, or high standards of social conduct in oneself or in others. This is another common definition of pride springing from a very evil mentality. That mentality is, I'm just as good as you. The reason why this mentality is evil is because no one ever adopts it if they really believe that they're just as good as the other person. It's just a way of disguising jealousy. Now, two men worked at the same job. The first one, Harry, worked hard to make himself presentable, while the other one, Larry, dressed like a slob because he didn't want to put any effort into picking his outfit. Now, at work, Larry becomes irritated by Harry because Harry is wearing a nicer outfit than him. Larry thinks to himself, who does this guy think he is wearing a fancy outfit like that? Does he think he's better than me? That's it. He's got to be conceited. Now, there's no real pride on the part of Harry. He doesn't think he's a better person than Larry. He just wants to put his best foot forward and puts effort into doing so. While Larry puts no effort into doing so, and being utterly unwilling to blame himself for this, he tries to shift the blame onto Harry. Because of this, Larry persecutes Harry. He treats him with prejudice and disdain, or at least plots against him in private. He doesn't like him, and he can't live on good terms with the man, simply because he views Harry as being guilty of pride when he's not. At this point, I don't think I even need to say that this is a false definition of pride, but I feel I should mention that this is not limited to styles of dress. Well-prepared meals, excellence in work, good athletic performance, good moral conduct, or anything else in which a person excels or can excel through sincere effort can and is labeled pride by jealous onlookers who aren't willing to put as much effort into their own lives. This mentality, unfortunately, is very powerful in the modern world to the point where real excellence is virtually outlawed in many circles. Still, that's a topic for a future clean cut. Definition 5. Great excellence in, or concern for, moral values. In the same way that putting great effort into accomplishing excellence in manners draws the irrational jealousy of many onlookers, putting great effort into accomplishing excellence in morals does the same. Just by being a decent human being, you embarrass those who aren't decent, and are reminded of that by how decent you are. However, this isn't the fault of the moral person, they're just doing the right thing. This is the fault of jealousy on the part of the onlooker and their own refusal to act morally themselves. Like definition 4, this is not a proper definition of pride. Definition 6. Self-confidence. Having confidence in your own ability to accomplish a specific task is often called pride, and the reason for this is something like a combination of numbers 2 and 4. On the one hand, some people see your healthy respect for your own abilities and assume that it's an unhealthy or disproportionate respect. On the other hand, other people see your confidence, are jealous of your confidence, and try to tear you down because of it. In either case, this is clearly not a correct definition of pride. Definition 7. Great confidence in one's own beliefs or viewpoints. We see the shadow of definition 2 here again. Again, if we're not allowed to have any respect for our own value as human beings, having respect for the value of our beliefs, thoughts, ideas, or opinions are obviously off limits, particularly since there are, we're told, so many other people out there whose beliefs are just as strong as ours, but utterly different. Again, since the assumption that we can't justify respecting ourselves in any sense is false, so is the assumption that we can't justify respecting our thoughts, ideas, or beliefs. We're not obligated to be skeptics in order to be humble. Once that hurdle is overcome, we're just left with the issue of other people having different beliefs than we do. My position on this is simply that if their beliefs are founded on evidence, I'll listen to their evidence happily and weigh its strength against the evidence for my own beliefs. But I make this decision on the basis of how strong the evidence for each belief is, not on the basis of how many people in the world disagree with me. That's a logical fallacy called argument ad populum. Definition 8. Arrogance, or an improperly high opinion of oneself in relation to others. Now we've come to the end of our list, and the real definition of pride as it relates to sin and virtue. Arrogance, or an improperly high opinion of yourself. If you think you're wonderful, and others are horrible, you're probably proud. If you think you're better than everybody else, you're probably proud. If you think you're the best there is in the world that nobody could do better than you, you're probably proud. 
Finally, if you think you're somehow worthy of the mercy and love of God, or indeed of his attention at all, you're probably proud. Pride is not about recognizing one's proper value. It's about failing to recognize one's proper value and assuming that that value is much greater than it really is. Humility, likewise, is not about calling yourself five feet tall when you're really six feet. It's about understanding your proper relationships to the universe, to your fellow man, and to God, so that you don't get swept up in yourself and your own abilities and lose track of what really matters. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.